Hello and welcome to Journal, I'm Steve Pendle. The aviation and aerospace industry is looking for its next generation of young people who want to explore careers in those fields. Joining us to talk about that a little bit later in the show is Captain John C. Mitchell, son of an original Tuskegee Airman and head of the, uh, the Tuskegee Airman Incorporated chapter here in Ohio, of which there are 51 around the country. Uh, you know, Captain Mitchell, thank you so much for joining us. One of the things you really want to talk about, which builds toward the career in aviation piece, is the history of the Tuskegee Airmen. And you've been really successful in getting the legislature to do a couple of things that respect and, and reflect on the, the success of that group. But talk a little about yourself, and then we'll talk about the Tuskegee Airmen so people get an idea of, of who you are. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> again, <clears throat> my name is John Mitchell. I'm mm -hmm. the son of original Tuskegee mm -hmm. Airmen, right. and I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, hearing all the stories from my father. Ah. <laughs> and as you know that uh, uh, when you hear things from your father, you don't hear from any other outs mm -hmm. other source. You sort of say, "Is this really important?" Yeah, and, yeah, and so yeah. forth, and it, it goes on. But as time went on, and I mm -hmm. got in, interested in aviation and moved forward, I realized the significance okay. of uh, that story. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very surprised after I had left. I left uh, Ohio for about thirty years uh, mm -hmm. flying, right. and uh, from from that point. Uh, I began to hear all the other stories and so forth and realized that Ohio has a significant input with the Ohio or with the Tuskegee yeah. Airmen story. Huh. So uh, again, yes. uh, since uh, about 2007 or so, I've been working diligently to make sure that the youth in here mm -hmm. uh, under, understands that story of the uh, Tuskegee mm -hmm. Airmen. Yeah. Now, as you know, a lot of people are familiar because there's been a lot of emphasis on the, the run up to their activity in World War II and then emphasis on what, the, what that group did in World War II. But there's, as you said, there's an Ohio connection here that a lot of people would have no idea existed. And, and the things that happened that those, those men uh, you know, achieved after the war mm -hmm. and, and what they really meant to have, what eventually became the U.S. Air Force. Mm -hmm. that, so talk a little about the, the little known pieces yeah. of that story that maybe well, let's, we're not familiar yeah, with. Yeah, let's start okay. from the uh, okay, start uh, from uh, the beginning, from a, uh, yeah. a beginning okay, uh, all right. and so forth. Yeah. In, in the uh, late 40s, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. aviation is only about 40 years old. Right. Okay. Right. And the kids that grew up during that period of time, born in 1919, the 20s and so forth, mm -hmm. they had a such an interest in in aviation because that's what was the talk of everything. Yeah, that was the high tech, that, that was the uh, highest uh, tech uh, of its day. And yep. and, and mm -hmm. those kids, I'll say it that, that mm -hmm. way, yeah. those kids at that, that time was living in a segregated environment. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the, they, they really didn't have that much hope or that much uh, idea of what's going to happen, mm -hmm. but based on World War One and what happened to the veterans in World War One, okay. uh, meaning that those guys came back and was were literally, uh, if you wore a uniform in mm -hmm. the United States and you're African American, was like putting a a, a, a red yeah. cloth w with a, a bullseye, bullseye right on, on you, mm -hmm. and so forth. And they were lynched and all and so sure. forth. And yeah. again, in 1940, there was the the draft, mm -hmm. okay, a, a peacetime draft, and so African Americans were going to go to war. Mm -hmm. They had right. to go to war. If you didn't go, uh, if you didn't sign up or do whatever, yeah. you ended up in jail. Right. So the Pittsburgh Gazette and many of the other black newspapers came back and said, "Hey, look, if our people got to go to war, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that when they go to war, they have the ability to fly airplanes and tanks and so ah. forth." Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, during the 1925 War College, they actually came back and said, well, African Americans do not have the ability to do that. Right. And Which so it became an experiment mm -hmm. to yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what they had to overcome, that yeah. segregation and so forth. And so once they did come together, they went off to war. And mm -hmm. as many of you already know, they had an exceptional uh, uh, protection of the bomber records right. and yeah. so forth mm -hmm. that they actually were uh, the bombers were actually coming back and saying, by request, yeah. we want those red tails. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so yep. so yep. moving on to, mm -hmm. um, so when they got back, mm -hmm. they still had that whole concept of segregation. Right, yeah, they, and, which, which mm -hmm. just not to interrupt yeah. you, but yeah. they, they were actually treated better in the European countries than they were in their own country. And, well, uh, one, yeah. uh, one of our uh, original Tuskegee Airmen said when he, because he was yeah. shot down and was a POW, mm -hmm. he yeah. was treated better <laughs> by the Germans. Than he was <laughs> his own. Uh, exactly. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but uh, coming back, mm -hmm. it was the movement of trying to get back to the way it used to be. 
mm -hmm. and right. and the segregation mm -hmm. and and so forth and so on, and so that comes up to the second part of the Tuskegee Airmen story that a lot of people do not know. Okay, okay, and that that second part is really boils down to uh, what, the Freeman Field mutiny. Okay, okay, Freeman hmm. Field mutiny was basically when the, the uh, Still during the la latter part of the war, they had the fighter group, but they also decided to start training the pilots for the bomber group. Ah, okay. Okay, so that bomber group uh, was, they really was trying to figure out where they could put them mm -hmm. and, and so forth. Yeah. So they ended up in uh, uh, Freeman Field uh, in Indi Indiana. Okay. And when they all got there, they were told that they couldn't use the white officers mm -hmm. club. Of course. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> even though there were regulations that said, yes, yeah. uh, uh, if you don't have a black officer's uh, uh, yeah. club, yeah. you could use the white officer's yeah. club. But, but they said, nope, you can't go in there. Hmm. So, uh, about 104 of them, well, th th some of them said, well, this is what the regulation says, this is mm -hmm. what we can do. So, they started moving moving towards using the, uh, the, uh, the officer's uh, club. Okay. And uh, uh, the commander, who was a white commander at the time, says, no, you will not do that, and we are mm. ordering you to sign this letter that says that you will not yeah. come into the officer's wow. club. Yeah. And 104 of them were arrested yeah. <laughs> because said, they would we're not, not sign. They were not going to sign. <laughs> they were not going to yeah. sign. Yeah. And some of them even got arrested twice. So, yeah. Yeah. so, so uh, based on that, that aspect of it, three were actually court-martialed, mm -hmm. and uh, one was actually con uh, convicted. And, uh, um, and I think it was 15 that were actually given uh, letters of reprimand, which basically said that they would not be able to uh, mm -hmm. uh, move up in the military yeah, would, ranks. Yeah, would basically stop their career yeah. with its tracks, in essence. A exactly. Uh, so, yeah. obviously, that didn't mm -hmm. work. Right. So they came back and said, okay, we still need to, we still yeah. want to train them. Uh, mm -hmm. The president said we need to train them. So they moved them all to uh, eventually over to Lockbourne Air Force Base, which okay. is right in, c in Central America. I mean, Central, Central Ohio. Central sure. Ohio. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, because of that, it was a segregated base, top to bottom, everybody, mm. uh, African Americans, and that's where they really started moving into their excellence. Ah. Okay. okay. So yeah. now, and, and when you talk about that, we, we we'll come back in just a moment because we're going to take a little break here. Yeah, we can talk about that about because again, that's this is the little known part of that whole historical event that was the Tuskegee Airmen, and and led to and you're going to talk about uh, why many of them stayed in the military, mm -hmm. the reasons for that, which weren't weren't good re, weren't good reasons because of. of the, the lack of opportunity in the out, outside the military. So right. we'll talk about that in just a moment. Our guest is Captain John Mitchell. Uh, we're talking about the Tuskegee Airmen. We're also going to talk a little about how we can get people involved, younger people involved in aviation and the opportunities are there too. So back in just a moment here on The Journal. Thank you for staying with us here on The Journal. Our guest is Captain John Mitchell. He's the son of an original Tuskegee Airman. And he's bringing us really up to speed on the stories you haven't heard about the Tuskegee Airmen. Everybody's familiar with the, the movies and the World War II activity and, and some of the activities that predated that, but there's a lot more to that story. And you were, you were just talking about the fact that after the war, uh, a significant number of those Tuskegee Airmen ended up in central Ohio at, the, at an air base near Columbus. So let's pick the story up there and talk about what transpired from that point on. Okay, well, real far, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. in essence, what had happened is they still were maintaining this concept of, of segregation. segregation. Mm -hmm. So they had to, they were looking to find some place where they could send all these African American mm -hmm. uh, pilots and mechanics, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. to what base. And and Lockbourne agreed to say, hey, send them here, ah. and uh, okay. uh, we'll do what we need to do. So Benjamin O. Davis actually became the commander of that mm -hmm. base. He's the first commander of the uh, any. Uh, all African American air base, mm -hmm. and uh, as I recall, there's close to 1,200 people were actually mm -hmm. stationed. So what what we do uh, in our in uh, the national is is say that everyone that was in that segregated Army Air Corps mm -hmm. are considered original Tuskegee oh, Airmen. Okay. So it's not just the pilots. It's yeah. not just the mm -hmm. people that were fought over in the war. war. It's, it's that, that whole, whole core war. of people mm -hmm. that was in that segregated oh, unit. Okay. And uh, um, one of the uh, one of the things that I marvel at is mm -hmm. when you start looking at the names of some of those people that mm -hmm. were in there. Sure. Then you're you're able to find quite a few people. The first uh, uh, mm -hmm. mayor of uh, of uh, Detroit. Was uh -huh. a Tuskegee Airman. Uh -huh. okay. okay, but that—that's the, 
the yeah. people up north. Mm -hmm. But but yeah. we <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but uh, uh, we also have uh, uh, window uh, uh, window. I want to say window homes out mm -hmm. of Urbana. We had uh, uh, a number of uh, people that. Uh, um, uh, John Roseman mm -hmm. out of Columbus, Ohio, the first person, first African American that actually ran for uh, mayor in Columbus, in Columbus Ohio, uh, was a Tuskegee yeah. Airman. Yeah. And uh, so when they got out of the service, many of them showed up there mm -hmm. uh, in yeah. Columbus or in Ohio itself. Uh -huh. And okay. there's just a uh, huge group of names that if you actually start looking at those names, you'll say, mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know. And so, and even now mm -hmm. we're beginning to find out, well, there's other people that mm -hmm. were Tuskegee, they just never signed up and said, hey, we were there, uh, and so yeah. forth. Now, so, real I'm quick, sorry. let me just ask you a question real quick. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have these people that were very important people outside before they became Tuskegee Airmen or part right. of that group. Mm -hmm. Uh, was this sort of a cross section, though, of the African American population at that point? I mean, did you have, did you have people who weren't VIPs or whatever, weren't, mm -hmm. weren't other, you know, different? Well, well yeah. everybody from the top to mm -hmm. the bottom. I mean, right. who was cutting hair versus uh, mm -hmm. uh, the nurses, and everybody was African American right. because of the right. segregation. Yep. Okay. And uh, um, even when Columbus was not completely out of that segregation mode, mm -hmm. they had the influence on Columbus and on Central Ohio to sure. desegregate yeah. every, everything. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, the um, things that I, I well, I grew up in Columbus, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and not realizing that many of the teachers, many of the people around had that connection, and if they did not have that connection to the Tuskegee Airmen, they had that connection to the fact that these were people oh, okay. that pushed excellence. Mm -hmm. They constantly ah, okay. pushed the excellence and they constantly pushed education. Yep. Okay. And so, and that's what our chapter is about, is mm -hmm. maintaining that excellence and maintaining that e mm -hmm. education in terms of basically saying to uh, people, it's already been done, mm -hmm. okay, right. we have a uh, model. This mm -hmm. is what they've done. Yeah. So and guess what? The younger generation can do the same thing. Uh, okay. But by not knowing that history, the tendency sure. is to always try to uh, reinvent yeah, the to, wheel. Yeah, to, yeah, to, to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in essence, that's the mm -hmm. uh, message that we're really, really trying to get okay. out there to yeah. say, hey, look, this has already been done. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm well, sorry. Go no, ahead. no, no. And, and you know, and, and as you were saying, we at the beginning of the show, we talked about the fact that Ohio plays a significant role here. And, and one of the things you've been working on, I know we talked uh, a couple of weeks ago about this, uh, was that because of Ohio's connection, because of that central Ohio, the Columbus Air Base mm -hmm. uh, situation, that, that Ohio should be recognizing that somehow. And I know you talked about mm -hmm. uh, working with the legislature to mm -hmm. put together, to have them dedicate a day and say, this is Tuskegee Airmen Day. So talk a little bit about, about that. Because <laughs> again, that's, that's, again that's, that's part of this story too, because it's again, moving things forward, advancing mm -hmm. things. So talk a little bit about that. Well, when we first talked about it, they were still trying to get the right. legislation mm -hmm. through. Well, from, from my understanding, as of last Thursday, the uh, Senate voted, we're still waiting on the mm -hmm. governor to uh, sign it. Right. But in essence, we, we will have a Ohio Tuskegee Airmen Day ah. that's recognized throughout the state. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be on March the 29th. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. what's the significance? Because I know that there was another date you were looking for, but st there is significance to March 29th. <laughs> though, so talk about that a little bit. Well, again, as, yeah. uh, uh, as you already know, yeah. that wasn't my my prime Your first day, choice. My yeah. first choice. Yeah. Okay. But uh, March uh, March uh, uh, 29th is uh, um, the day that was uh, um, the, uh, the Tuskegee Airmen actually got the. Uh, Congressional Gold Medal from Congress. Ah, okay. Okay. Right. And another one, a little known fact, and mm -hmm. she wouldn't want to, want uh, want me to say it, but I will say it. The uh, now the um, the um, president of the chapter in Cleveland, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Eldora uh, Levert, she was the person that wrote the letter that was instrumental for that yeah. as aspect of it. And again, another Ohio connection. Ah, yep. So yeah, <laughs> because like I say, you know, because most people, and uh, you know, and you know this that. When they, when they say Tuskegee Airmen, they think of the original training down in the South and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, and this is just a part of the story that probably 99% of the people don't know about. Exactly. So Ohio's role, pretty significant, and, and their role in, in changing Ohio. Exactly. So that's good, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
anything, any other pieces I haven't asked you about that you want to add to this? Because we've got just a couple of minutes and then we'll, we'll bring on uh, one of your <laughs> protégés, kind of, okay. a student that'll, that'll get into this. As you said, we're not okay. reinventing the wheel, we can do this again. Well, yeah. let me, yeah. let me yeah. add, the, mm -hmm. add this piece to it, sure. is that many of the pilots that, that, mm -hmm. that once they desegregated, uh, many of the pilots stayed in the military right. okay. uh, because they couldn't get the airline jobs mm -hmm. and, and yeah. so forth. Yeah. And uh, so now you have the colonels and lieutenant colonels that stayed in. Uh, mm -hmm. Fantastic records while they stayed in. Yeah. Uh, but the first African American that got hired by a major airline was Dave Harris, and he was from Columbus, Ohio. Ah, okay. And so that again, was in 1964. Yeah. So Another, that, that Ohio yeah. connection just, just keeps, keeps going keeps and coming keeps together going and, yeah, and coming exactly. together. Now, real quick, too. You have, you know, you served in the military, right? Okay, uh, you flew some pretty significant aircraft. Okay, now, now you pat yourself <laughs> on the back a little bit because you flew some things that most people look at and go, "I have no idea what to do." So, talk about the planes you flew. Well, uh, in the military, I flew uh, uh, C-141s. Okay, big, and, uh, big, big, uh, big cargo plane. Big, a big cargo yeah, plane. But and, and yeah. the, well, the beauty of that was, yeah. was that you got. I was in my twenties and I was flying around the world as aircraft <laughs> commander. I mean. That hey, couldn't have been a better job than that, yeah. <laughs> and so forth. Yeah. But I also ended up flying uh, C-5s, which is the largest yep. cargo yeah. aircraft. The gigantic, the, the galaxy, really the, yeah, the huge yeah. planes. So, yeah, wow, so, I mean, so, so yeah, so, so you're, you're not without air flying skills, obviously, <laughs> and, and let alone your long civil career as well as, yeah. as, a, as a civilian pilot, as uh, an airline pilot. I was hired in 1983 with U.S. Airways, and I flew... Um, well, numerous airplanes mm -hmm. with them, and then eventually they, they emerged in with uh, American mm -hmm. Airlines. Right. So I retired from mm -hmm. American Airlines. So yeah. uh, there were several airplanes that were involved in that aspect. Yeah, too, yeah so. you've, you've flown yeah. the big boys up yeah. there, the big ones, the <laughs> yeah. really big. Yeah, I mean the C-5, you have to, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you have to know what you're doing there just a little bit. <laughs> so good. Uh, we're going to be joined by, by someone who it kind of represents this other initiative you've been talking mm -hmm. about in just a moment. So we'll be back uh, with Captain John C. Mitchell and another guest here on The Journal in just a moment. Thank you for staying with us here on The Journal. Our guests are Captain John Mitchell, who is the, uh, the head of the uh, in Tuskegee Airmen Incorporated chapter uh, here in Ohio and the son of an original Tuskegee Airman long career in civil aviation, long career in the military. And uh, one of the other reasons here, we talked a lot about the Tuskegee Airmen and mm -hmm. history and, and a lot of the little known facts and right. Ohio's big connection to that that most people probably had no idea of. But the other reason you're here too is to talk about, as you said, uh, we've accomplished a lot before in, in getting young people, especially uh, uh, young people, African Americans involved, we, we know how to do that. And so one of your initiatives to make sure that we still keep that movement going forward, that uh, we're able to attract and, and make sure that, that the careers are open to, uh, uh, to African Americans, especially young African Americans. And, and one of our other guests here is Zion Jackson, a student at Bowling Green State University who's uh, in flight technology. So talk about that initiative and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit too with Zion about his experience and how, how he ended up here in Bowling Green and, and in this field. Okay. Uh, again, uh, many of the original Tuskegee mm -hmm. Airmen are well, in, well, they're well in their 90s, and some mm -hmm. of them are in the hundreds. Sure. And uh, so, where do you go from there? And we want to maintain their legacy, mm -hmm. what they were able to do with their excellence and their education. Mm -hmm. right. So we want to get that story out there, and the story should be and continue to be told to the younger people mm -hmm. that follow, right. and so forth. And one of the things that uh, we uh, have worked with, we've worked with several aviation groups, uh, the Buckeye Tiger. Youth Aviation Adventure, uh, mm -hmm. EAA, and some of the uh, schools in Ohio, right. and mm -hmm. Ohio State and, and, and Kent mm -hmm. State, and we wanted to uh, reach out to Bowling Green, sure. and then I found <laughs> Zion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so we're reaching out to mm -hmm. Zion to basically, uh, as they're in their aviation training, to mm -hmm. also come back to the uh, high schools and the other, ah, uh, okay. and then give the exposure to those kids mm -hmm. coming along. Sure, okay. because that, yeah, because especially uh, when someone comes in and you know, is in a field like this in, in this particular you know, major, uh, students will listen, as you were talking about your dad, you heard the mm -hmm. stories from dad, it's like, okay, well, that's kind of okay, but then when you heard it from other people, then it became Correct. really significant. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way when some, one of your peers talks to you about something, in this case, a student, it, it means more, I think, to students as well. So, so Zion, you know, talk about a little bit how you, you know, how you chose this field and how you came to Bowling Green, and, and and talk a little bit about the program. Oh, for sure. Um, 
I chose Bowling Green because mainly they were like one of the few schools in the state as well as like one of the few schools in the nation to have their own uh, airfield on campus which I mm -hmm. thought that was really convenient mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to like find a ride to get there I could just walk there it's like 10 minutes walking sure. distance from my dorm and um, I actually chose this field because I wanted to like kind of as you said the model was already there I wanted mm -hmm. to kind of like break out of the uh, the normal and like trying to like do something different per mm -hmm. se and then kind of encourage like people from my family as well as like other like black people and uh, youth of America to like say like hey you're able to do something more than just like your average like nine to five you can mm -hmm. do something and like kind of like what my instructor had told me is like when he was flying the airlines it's kind of like the best office in the world kind of he got the best view and like I can I can I can attest to that it's it's like some of the views up there you, you never forget them so like um, sure. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's kind of amazing just to well, be a part of it. Yeah, and, and you talked about the fact too we, we, before we came on the set. Um, you you are a licensed pilot. You you yes, just sir. did that recently, <laughs> and uh, yes, so sir. talk a little about you know getting to that point because most of us will never be pilots of anything, <laughs> let alone the C5s. But but just talk about that experience of of you know that was your goal, one of them. So yeah, it was. talk about about how you got there, how you got to that point. Well, it, it wasn't easy. I'll tell you mm -hmm. that for certain. Uh, there was definitely a lot of setbacks. There was definitely times where I was kind of doubting my abilities, but I kind of just stayed true to the course. I reached out to uh, Mr. Mitchell, mm -hmm. and uh, he gave me uh, assurance as well as like encouragement. Like just stick with it. If it, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, mm -hmm. as you would say. And like yeah. glory be to God that I was able to uh, keep doing uh, what I was doing, and I and I was eventually able to like pass the test to get my license. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it, training training for wise like like anything like it takes work. You're gonna have to work at it. Nothing mm -hmm. comes easily. Nothing's free. You gotta work at it. And I kind of just took that to heart. Like clearly, um, mm -hmm. if I want to do it, I gotta be able to sacrifice some stuff. I gotta be able to stay up a couple nights studying. I gotta be able to like reach out and network with different people and get like their opinions and their uh, um, their experience on how they went about it and then kind of take that in my own experience and kind of run with it. Yeah. Now, what age did you decide you wanted to learn to fly? Um, how soon? I, Three, four? No, I, 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 uh, I, it wasn't that young. I probably decided <laughs> when I was in middle school. It actually came, uh, um, okay. I actually opened a book it, it was like actually a Tuskegee Airmen oh, book okay. actually oh, it was like it was like yeah. a, it was like I was looking at the different planes I'm like dang this kind of cool and it was yeah. like different like they were talking about the different people their works their aspirations everything I'm like I want to do this and like I talked to my dad about it. he said sure strive strive for the moon because and anything's yeah. possible just like so yeah so so all through high school and everything that was your they pointed toward that yes sir yeah now uh, when you when you with your your friends and things and you talk to them about that were they were they as supportive or not or they I mean yeah they were yeah. Uh, they they were supportive mm -hmm. um, family too like whenever whatever I chose to like uh, do they were going to be supportive no matter mm -hmm. what sure so like um, to have them at their back or have have them okay. Uh, in my corner and have them support me it just means a lot because I probably wouldn't be where I am today and where I'm like trying to go without like the support of them so yeah. I yeah. really appreciate them. Yeah. Now when you hear you know uh, somebody like this is exactly what you want to have happen. That's what I love to yeah. hear. Yeah. 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 I love to hear yeah. and at some point in time within the next I'll say five years I want to get on the airplane and say okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is your Captain Zion Jackson and uh, we're, yeah. our flight time to wherever is this. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's exactly it. I mean now what is your is that what your ultimate goal is to be a, a, an airline pilot or wh what is your what's your what's your thoughts on that? Uh, yes sir. Uh, coming out of college I want to like spend some time building on my hours as a CFI or certified flight instructor mm -hmm. oh, okay. um, yeah. pay for college that way get out of debt and then mm -hmm. uh, when I get my hours go to the airlines build my reputation mm -hmm. and the ultimate goal is to go cargo because oh, okay. like you can fly a lot more places you can do a lot of a lot more mm -hmm. stuff and like pay is a lot more lucrative that way so ah, okay. we're just thinking long game but hey life yeah. has a funny way <laughs> if I get a job I'll just be happy with that really mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yeah. sir. But no, that's yeah. It's interesting. You're you're already thinking w down the road quite a ways. Where yeah, mm -hmm. they said okay. I'll, most people like I'll go from A to A to B to C. And but you, you're as you said, you're thinking long game. Like this is what I ultimately want to do. Yeah, you kind of yeah. have to have like those goals in mind because you kind of like what I like to do. I like to like weigh my process after like a span of time. Like because mm -hmm. that's how you get a measure if you're moving towards or if you're like yeah taking steps backwards. So like it's good to have an end goal in mind and like a. Um, like a goal uh, mindset where you want to be at. So. Yeah, no, if you, I mean, when you talk to other, you know, people your age or younger, 
uh, how do you describe how to do this or, or get into this experience becoming getting involved in aviation how do you how do you position that with them um, it's kind of difficult because like I'd be like trying to explain how to um, how like what I'm thinking and how like different like things go together and like I actually came into the program like not knowing anything so I came like basically oh. like I had to learn everything that I know from scratch which is kind of like mm -hmm. the difficult part but I was able to overcome that and like I kind of like try to kind of dumb it down but in some cases you can't like mm -hmm. information is what it is how that you understand it or what or you, you don't, don't you kind of just yeah. have to kind of just have to yeah, like there's no work around for pretty the, much things yeah. have to be a certain way exactly right? so right. I kind of like try to take that in stride like I'll like I try to explain to them what I'm doing and like sometimes it just like goes right over their head sometimes yeah. Yeah. but no, you have to, yeah, but, but yeah. you have to start. You have to start it's a somewhere. start, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, good. Well, we've got just a, a moment or so left. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about how people can, A, get involved in Tuskegee Airmen Incorporated and, and, and this other initiative that, that it basically is uh, represented here by Zion today? Boy. Well, the easiest way is to uh, our website, mm -hmm. www.tuskegeeairmenomc.com. Okay. And if you want to um, know more of the history of the Tuskegee Airmen, there's uh, the national... Uh, website uh, tuskegeeairmen.org not without the OMC mm -hmm. and okay. you get all the details many uh, many of the stories of uh, the uh, lives of uh, Tuskegee Airmen but on our website the OMC website we actually have a way to go directly into the Buckeye Tigers uh, youth oh. aviation mm -hmm. adventure and some of the other so aspects of uh, mm -hmm. uh, Ohio State aviation program mm -hmm. and so forth the, to get into that aspect of it but the w one thing I want to say mm -hmm. is these guys, these younger guys, are so much smarter than I ever thought about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, so uh, that, that's the way. It's, that's the way it's supposed is to work, right? Is that the way right? it's supposed yeah. to work? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to work. They better be because they're they're the future. So they better be smarter than we yeah. are. So, yeah, good. Well, uh, yeah. Captain John Mitchell, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, and appreciate it so you're much. And, and thank you for your service okay. and, and all you're doing right now to uh, to enlighten everybody on the on the uh, the rest of the history of the Tuskegee mm -hmm. Airmen. And Zion, thank you so much for coming no on. Appreciate it and. Uh, yeah, it's a yeah. pleasure being well, here. Thank yeah, you for inviting me. Someday we'll have to take a flight with him and see what happens. Oh, yeah, yeah, I plan on it. I, I, I actually I plan on it. Yeah. So. yeah, we'll be cargo, but that's okay. <laughs> Not a problem. So good. You can check us out every week at wbgu.org, and of course, you watch us every Thursday at eight o'clock on the Journal here on WBGU PBS. We will see you again next time on the Journal.